take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. Let's rise up and welcome Sister Linda as the Lord is bringing her. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Father, we bless you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Begin to appreciate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Jesus is in our midst. Begin to thank God for today. Many have died this morning, but you are still alive. Begin to appreciate Jesus. Begin to thank him that you are alive. Many have died in the hospital. This morning, accident, plane crash all over the world. You don't know what has happened, but you are still alive. The Lord has kept you throughout the night to make you to see another day. Begin to appreciate your God. Begin to thank him. Begin to appreciate him. It is a privilege. Oh, Lord, we thank you for counting us among the living. We worship you, Lord. We bless you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Be thou exalted. Be thou glorified. Thank you, our Father. We worship you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Adonai, we worship you. Son of God, you are so good, Almighty God. I Jesus. 
Father, we worship you this morning. Only you deserve the praise. We give you all our praise, all our honor. The hour has come, O oh Lord, for you to magnify and glorify your name. Lord, we cover this place with the blood of Jesus. We come against every distraction of the devil. We soak every one of us with the blood of Jesus. Father, I've said to you, Lord, I don't have power on my own to testify lord you are the owner of this message you are the owner of this revelation come and do your wonders open their eyes in the name of jesus everyone that have been doubting any scale in their lie in their eyes oh lord jehovah arise and take it away in the name of jesus father let my voice be your voice as i testify oh god i pray the book of life will be opened today and many names will be written in it in Jesus' name. We pray for the spirit of genuine conversion. Father, they will repent today. Everybody will know that, oh, hell is real. Heaven is real. And today they will repent of their sins. Thank you, Father, for what you are going to do. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I bring good news to you from the Father. Before I go into the testimony, many of you have heard about the testimony. Maybe many of you, this is your first time. Or some of you, you have heard and then you have doubted it. By the grace of God, you will understand it today in Jesus' name. But before I go to the testimony, there is a message here the Lord gave me to give workers, pastors, pastor wife coordinators, everybody that you know you are a worker in the vineyard of God, you are a usher, you are a choir 
whatever thing you are doing for God, this is the message the Lord wants you to know that He's here with us and He's going to bless all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord say, tell them to stand well. No man can win the heavenly race by standing on one leg. Some of the ministers or pastors here know half truth, while others know nothing at all. They use their sense and thoughts to interpret my word and do my work. This is not profitable for their salvation and the salvation of their members. Know that many of your kind that we are zealous in my house and in the work of the ministry are now in hellfire. Because they were not doing it right and we are not righteous. Many of you I have brought here to this conference are in my true and righteousness way. Your hands are defiled and your hearts are not clean. Many of you are not following my standard of righteousness and holiness. Mean to take you to heaven. You are walking behind me. In before me, hence I cannot control you. The Lord is saying many of you, for you to walk before him, you are walking behind him. Simply mean, as long as you are not walking before him in righteousness and holiness, he cannot control you and guide you. When a child is walking behind his father, is not in his view and cannot be well directed if you continue in your sin by hardening your heart to the truth you have learned here and continue in your half truth and ignorance you will not blame me in that day hallelujah the lord said i should tell you many of you you are zealous working for him through evangelism mission work in your church, usher, choir, pastor, you are fasting, you are praying, you are in a prayer warrior, or you have a church, a denomination, you are, you are leading, you are very zealous, but most of your word, your doctrine, the way you understand the Bible, the way you are teaching it is not in its perfect way. And many of your kind that we are like that, thinking that they are going to heaven, they are now in hellfire. So he's telling you that you don't want you to walk in vain because any child that did not walk before his father, anything that happened to the child behind the father, the father will not be in place to be blamed because the child is not before him to control him. So he wants you to listen and learn all what they are telling you here so that you go and practice it in your life, in your ministry, in your evangelism, in your denomination, around your area, in your family, let people know that truly you are a child of God. Hallelujah. So this is the message. You will think about it as we continue with the message, the revelation. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you about reflecting, reflection on heaven and hell. We are going to think about it. We are going to reflect on it. We are going to go through it again. Hallelujah. Because many of you that listened to the testimony the last time, 2013, you were on fire, but now one way or the other, you have waxed cold. Why other people, this is their first time. Some of you, you have heard about it, but you are doubting. I don't want you to doubt because what I said before is still true. And Jesus said, tell me that, repeat it again, tell them again, keep telling them so that tomorrow nobody will say, I did not know. Hallelujah. Heaven it's a reward. It's the place where God rewards faithful servants. It is the place where God is. Hallelujah. Although God took me to hell first before going to heaven, but I would like to start from heaven, end it up in hellfire. Hallelujah. Because I want you to know, many people used to say, why all the time Sister Linda talk about hell? Hell, hell, hell. It, it scares us. I want you to know that in many churches today, many denominations today, everybody, both the sinners, both the liars, both the churches that are not in the way of God, they talk about heaven. Even sinners, even Muslims, even unbelievers that are out there and robbers, you ask them, where do you want to go if you die? They will tell you, I want to go to heaven. 
Everybody knows about heaven, and everybody is wishing to go to heaven. The only thing is that they don't know how to go there. But today, you can be my witness that in the denominations today, in your life today, hellfire has been silent. Many people don't think about hell. They see the pastors, the ministers, some of them have made us to think that God is so loving that he cannot punish any sinner. They will tell you that God is not wicked. Some of you, your denomination say God is not wicked. It's not like that. How can you put somebody into hell and leave the person there? It's not like that. I was part of those denominations those days that I believe that God is not wicked like that. I believe there is hell fire, but I do not believe that I will stay there all through my life. No. I only believe that hell fire is for Satan and his demon that will stay there forever. But we human beings, we can just go there for some time and come back as what the Muslims believe. But I never knew it's more deeper than that. So that's why I like telling people about hellfire. Because that was what Jesus said. Go and tell them. As I'm showing you, go and tell them that this place is not made for them. And there's a way out for them now that they are still alive. So that's why I like telling people about hellfire. Because you don't even know that there's a terrible place waiting for sinners. Even child of God that you are playing with salvation, today you will sin, tomorrow you, you restore, next tomorrow you do this, you are in your heart, you are doing your own thing. Little thing like this, we just landing in that terrible place. So that's why I like telling people, as Jesus said, tell them all the time, you have the opportunity, reflect them on hellfire. Let them know that if you see their breath is taken away from them, the next thing any sinner will see before him or her, it's hellfire. Somebody died in the hospital, in the accident, anywhere. As long as you are a sinner, as soon as you die, you are going to be waiting in hellfire until the final judgment. So the Lord don't want you to go there. Hallelujah. Turn with me to John chapter 14. Verse 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And where and whether I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. Hallelujah. I want to emphasize on verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. Many of you will be doubting, is it true there is heaven? Is it true this thing they are telling us? We don't believe by faith, but your heart is shaking. Is it true if I die, I will live again? Am I going to, see a, am I going to dis, go to somewhere? Am I going to see heaven? Is it true I'm going to see Jesus? Is it true I'm going to see hellfire? Demons are there. If somebody die, are you going somewhere? I want to tell you you are going somewhere. Heaven. The little sigh in heaven that Jesus gave me the opportunity to see with this my two eyes, I cannot be able to describe it. I will try. Yesterday, Brother Akpan was talking about only in just a second that God opened his eye to see heaven. He was angry that why did they, why did they have to brought him from that place? Some of you have gotten revelation, dream about a beautiful land, a fine place that when you wake up in the morning, you will be angry, you want to go. Some of us has read the delightful revelation of heaven and how to get there. You have seen a man called Sonika Sodi that described heaven, stay in heaven maybe a month or more than a month. Describe heaven only reading the book alone. You would like want to die now and enter there. Isn't it? You want to die now and go there. Because that place where God himself is staying, it's just like now, for example, your own house, your own bedroom, you make more time to take care of your bedroom very well. Maybe your own house. You will be building house for people, but when it comes to your own, you want to do all the styles and design that people will know that, ah, this person sees, see her house, sees her house. 
This is how God has taken time to design heaven. When you enter heaven, only to visit, you will be begging not to come back. I used to say, only the gate, the gate alone, I'm talking about my experience. Only the gate I saw alone, all my torture, all the pain I was walking through from hellfire was not, I was, I, over, I forgot about that one. I was admiring the gate. It's like, even if I stay at that place for thousands of years, or hundred years, I will not get tired of looking at the gate. Because it's something that you have never seen in your, in your life. It's like the gate, I will say, it's like the gate have life. The gate is changing. It's like when somebody is changing his or her dress, you know. After some time, you go and put on fine dress. After some time, you come again and put on another one. You will say, wow, this person is dressing very well. This was how the gate was displaying. After a second like this, you will see another style. After a second like this, you will see all these glittering stones, all these precious stones. It's like they are pulling it from that gate to the earth. You will see the gate is welcoming you. Even the gate is welcoming you. So when I saw it, I was looking at it. I've never seen something like this. Our gate here, if you paint it black until you feel you paint it again red, you don't even, you don't, all the gates, even in America, whatever thing, there's nothing like that. I was looking at this thing. I said, what am I seeing? What is this? My eyes. Where am I? Where am I going to? Which place is this again? Just like hellfire. When you are entering there, you will know that this place I'm going, maybe you will not know you are going to hellfire, but seeing the entrance of hellfire as I saw, you will know that this place is a dangerous place. You will be like, what am I going to do here? When I saw the entrance of hell, the darkness that is welcoming me inside that place, I wanted to go back, but my leg cannot. Because fear started, I said, I cannot enter that kind of place. So this is how the gate of heaven to it. When you see the gate of heaven, all you want now is for the gate of heaven to open for you so that you can go in. And see, if the gate is like this, how inside will be. So all what you are going through in suffering for holiness and righteousness, living, my sister, my brother, my uncle, my auntie, my father, my mother, it doesn't compare a bit with the reward you are going to get in heaven. You should be enjoying suffering for Christ. You should love it. You should be even praying, God, bring persecution to my way so that my crown will increase. My diamond, my crown will increase. It's because you have not known the praise called heaven. That's why little persecution you give up. You will be thanking God that God let people persecute me for you because when they are persecuting me for you, there is a reward for me. When I was in hellfire, cry my life, I cry, I cried. When the demon said to me, it is finished for you, I was thinking, how did this happen? Is this how death is? How did I come here? What is my problem? Who sent me here? I was just confused because everything about hellfire was blind to me, truth by my pastor. Some of you, your pastor has deceived you. And pastor that you are here, many people are crying hellfire because of you. Those that have died in your church before you know this truth, they are crying with your name. We are coming there. I was there crying with my pastor name. Because I remember there was a time my younger sister Finda told me that the way you are living, she knew I love God. Going to church, going to choir practice, buy gifts for pastor. Sometimes in the house, I will now say this thing is for pastor. We will not have food in the house, but I make sure that that money I will save it just to buy something for pastor to appease the pastor. Just believing that as long as the pastor is happy with me, me too, I'm going to heaven because I'm a man of God. So all my time, all my thinking is to worship the pastor so that he's continuing to say, oh, my daughter, after service, I'll just go and kneel her. Papa, I bless you. Oh, Papa, God bless you. You will lay hands on me. You will put anointing on me. This is my best daughter. God bless you. The tea is so sweet in me. I say, ah, as the man of God recognize me, this is how God is loving me too. When Finger told me that Linda, the way you are living your life, 
no heaven for you. All your zeal, you will go for choir practice. You will go for cleaning pastor house. You will go for rally. If they, if they have crusade, you are up and down. Go and be sharing tracks. But you are not going to heaven. I was angry with my sister. I said, why? She now started telling me, number one, let me start con tell you about your outward before I enter inside you. That's my younger sister was telling me. Your attire you are putting on, the Bible has condemned it. If you don't believe, it's inside the Bible. She brings out scriptures, especially one that was talking about trust as in Deuteronomy. I disbelieve it, but it was shaking my heart. I went to my pastor. My pastor now told me that it's the old thing, Old Testament, this is a lie. That Jesus has come and died, all things have passed away, all things have become new. And then he too opened a scripture for me and told me that, didn't the Bible say this is the temple of God? I say yes. And the Bible is telling us we should decorate the temple. So decorating yourself is not a sin. We want to tell people that thinking that we are serving a dead God, a poor God, let them know that we too, we serve a rich God, a blessing God. It's a God of blessing and reward. And then he told me that, your mama in the church, are you not seeing her putting all these things, the way she dressed? Are you not admiring her? I say, yeah. is she not looking beautiful, presentable all the time? I say, yes. And now say, do you think I love my wife? More than, I love you more than my wife. If my wife was doing bad at the Bible, I've said it. I should have told her not to put all this thing, not to wear trousers, not to paint her body. I will not give her money every weekend. She needs to go and do her hair to do new style. I will not be doing that. So, my daughter is not true. Don't allow Finder to be deceiving you. And then he remove one big anointing oil and pour it on me. Till I reach out, the anointing oil was running on my body. And then he told me I should never allow Finder to speak to me. That day I reached in the house, Finder want to talk, I give her one slap. Tell her that never in your life again you condemn my dressing. And tell me what to do, it is a lie. They have gone and deceived you. And then since that day, Finda start praying. So what I'm saying here, many of you, you are a worker, you are a pastor, you are an evangelist, you are a this. You have deceived many people by your false doctrine. Many pastors are saying today, what God means about trousers. He says you should not wear men's trousers. Men should not wear women's trousers. I will tell you what Jesus said about even wedding ring, that you people are wedding people in the church. When I was in hell, I cried. Nobody saved me. Nobody knew I was there. I called all of my sister. Finda helped me. Nobody hear me. Even the pastor, all he was waiting for now is the day of burial to go and put me under the grave. Because that was where they should have carried me. It was in my, I was attending his church. But thank God that God have a plan for my life. As he have a plan for you. They want to change you today. As I was there, all my beating, all the torture the demon have given to me, and then I saw a man with a white garment shining, standing in front of me as I was coming out of that place. And then I stood before him like this. The man was looking at me, looking at me like this. And then he was shaking his head. It's like he's pitying me. As he was pitying me, I was admiring him that is it true that you are in this place? Because when I enter hellfire, I noticed that I did not see any light. Even the demons, they did not wear cloth. I did not see any of them looking presentable. Every one of them were black and dirty and smelly, including the human being that were there. It's a smelly place that you know that human beings are born in. The smell of rotting teeth is here. Nobody will see you wear decent cloth or whatever. People are crying for water. Is it cloth you are thinking of wearing? And the place is dark. The only light I saw in hellfire was the flame, the fire. When it's coming up like this, it's displaying. You will see the fire light is going up. Then, when I saw this man standing in front of me, I was wondering in my heart, how did he enter here? Because everywhere, it's just like now. You will know you enter here. But if they put up the light... You will not say, where is the door? Where did I? You will not see road to go out. That's why you cannot come out. Jesus said, I own the key of hell and death. Only Jesus can open hell gates to remove anybody who wants to remove there. You will know the road to enter, but you will not see road to come out because everywhere is covered with fire. 
everywhere everywhere and then when I saw this man standing I was like my heart who is this man the demon have not seen him yet moreover this kind of body is carrying he's looking glorious he's shiny this kind of white cloth he's wearing the white we call white on earth here is like black for heaven white because the white alone is like dew is coming off out of the white cloth it's like dew coming out of the white cloth that i saw the man wore and then he was looking at me like this his body was like I, I cannot it's not a human being kind of body very glorious body he stood like this and was looking at me face to face he did not say a word to me he was shaking his head like this and then he turned his back and started going gently with me out one of the powerful things I noticed when I was entering there the demon have mouth you are not going anywhere disobedient child who will touch you here today that righteous man has forsaken you I call on Jesus Jesus he said keep quiet he will not hear you they will laugh the way the demons they used to laugh just like those witches and wizards you watch in a movie they will laugh you to scorn that you will feel it in your heart they will be laughing like this so when they say this word to me that that righteous man which was jesus they were calling has forsaken me i was crying later it came to part i believe truly god has forsaken me because i've stayed there some time all the beating they have given me all the the wicked thing they have done to me all the thing they have do they have done to me up to now jesus did not save me i was confused when the demon started telling me my sin bit by bit i now knew that truly my sin was too much because lying fornication we've on attachment all abortion bleaching i never know all these things were sin the only thing i knew is that lying is a sin fornication is a sin but i don't know how to come out of it it is in the heart how can i put my hand in my heart to stop i want to stop sinning but the sin will just come i don't know my pastor did not teach me how to stop sinning what to do to stop sinning but this outward adornment he have never taught us in the church even you don't know so when this man brought me out I did not know this man until Jesus told me who was that person. Because when I saw Jesus, I saw a great, great difference between the one that went to hell to bring me out. Because when you see Jesus, they don't need to tell you, you know that this is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the great I am that I am. You will see power all over his body. You will know that this one is greater than the greatest. And then, when this man was walking with me out of hell. I was hearing sound of people. My eyes, water, mercy, love. I will not do it again. I was following this man. My heart was shaking. My heart was shaking. So that no demon would say, where are you going? Catch her there. They would draw me again. I was following this man. But to my surprise, the man was going me gently. No demon say, where are you going? When God set you free, no man can say no. When God say yes, no man can say no. Yes. Hallelujah. I followed this man. He was going, he was, he was not even walking fast, fast so that they would not see her. He was all walking majestically and shaking his head because he's seeing demonic things. He's seeing things that is not pleasing him. He was shaking his head, walking like this, going out. I was following him. I was just admire his body. And now say, oh God, where did this man come from? That had this kind of body. Which part in the world? Oh, I know that all human beings we have the same skin. It's just that this one is black, this one is fair, but this one is own body. I don't think any human being had this kind of body. I was all looking at him. He was carrying me. The voices of people was on me. They were crying. Till how this man know that dark tunnel to go out. I did not know. And then he carried me out. As soon as we left, came out. It's like a wind, a power, just came like this, was carrying us up. On earth, you use plane to go up the cloud. In heaven, you have power to fly. The man, the power just took us up. We are going like, like a jet, very fast. We are going up. And then I came to know that. After everything, I said, okay, so hell fire is down. Me, I don't study Bible. I don't know. All this thing I'm telling you is what I saw. It's what I had. But people that know Bible, as I'm talking, they are quoting and say, Sister Linda is here. 
So I came to say, ah, so hell fire is down. Because when we were going up, later Jesus now said this is heaven. So, okay, but for heaven, I know heaven was up. But I don't know where hell fire was. I was just like, maybe there's a place God make for hell fire. So hell fire is down. So when we reached up, we went very high, and then we landed again in a road. The man was still in front. I was still following him. I was walking behind him. For some time, as we reached at this gate, this gate attracted me, caught my attention. I forgot about the man that was standing by me. And then, as I was looking at the gate, the gate is it's like, it's play, like when something is playing with a child. He would change, I would admire, he would change again. I would admire like this, he would do like this. And then I saw a light was coming far inside this compound of where this gate was. A bright light, it's like they are sending a ball, the way they were coming very fast. But they were very bright from far distance they were coming. So when they came close, I came to know that it was the face of the angels, angel that I was seeing that was very bright. When they came close to me, I came to know that they are angels. They have very wide wings. And then I said to myself, so this thing is true that truly they are human beings, this angel, because the teachers in the school were like, I want to be like angel, all these things. But me sometimes I will be asking myself, how can God put feather? How did he do it? Put feather into human being. So I'll be thinking, thinking, little children, even when I grow up like that, I'll be thinking like that. Is it true? Or is it just white people? Or you both people that will be deceiving? Is it true that angel have wings? Something like that. So when I saw them for the first time since I was born in my eye, I saw them with angels flapping it behind their back like this. They were doing like this. They, then they descended before me like this. As then they were, came towards me, they were smiling. Oh, are you talking about Amsom? You are here saying Yearin is the one making me to look beautiful. The angels don't put anything. You will see how they look Amsom. And you, that God make out of his likeness, not the angels. You are now saying that you are ugly. You will go and see ugliness in hell. You will see ugliness. You yourself will know that truly I'm ugly. Because by the time you bond like gross animal, your eyes have come out, all your body is born and be dropping like leather. When you put leather in the fire, it will be dropping. This is that time you know that all your money we are wasting on your body to beautify this body is vanity. And then, when this angel came before me, two of them, they went straight towards me, begin to touch me, very cold hand, gently hand. Gentle hand touching my body, I was admiring them. What take my attention to look what they were doing to me? I was just watching them because you know what you are like now. You are aiming to see Jesus. You see Jesus now. Some of you say, When I die, I will ask Jesus this question. Just, when you die, you go to heaven, you will even forget the question. You will not be looking at him. He will say, Talk now. What do you want to say? You will not be watching, looking at him. So, all my years thinking of angels, is it true? What they were doing on my body did not even come to my mind to ask them what I, I was not looking at them. Look how they look also. Looking for fault. If their eyes is not straight, like so human being, their nose is big. This one eyes is big. Nothing you say this our God did not do the, the nose well. Everything is in perfect order. It's a perfect God. Ah! After they finish, immediately they finish. This gate, this gate will not open for filthy people. I did not see the angel went and knocked the gate. But the gate, after they finished with me, preparing me to meet the king of kings, the gate opened like this. When this gate opened, it's like a magic. When this gate opened, a bright light, powerful light, just like the light used his hand to hit my leg. The light, as the gate opened, my eyes just opened to see the light. It's like something pushed my leg. I just went straight on my knee, bam, like that. And then my eyes, I was straining, struggling to look through. Ah, and then this voice that came out of this light was like thousands put all the thunders together. When he just called my name, I was just surprised. In hellfire, the demon called my name. In heaven again, which I did not know I was in heaven, this person called my name. He now say, welcome, my daughter Linda. Where I was kneeling now, it was earthquake. The ground was shaking. 
And then I was like, in my heart, who owns this voice? Who can talk like this? That's only the voice of this person. The ground is shaking. Very fearful. It's like your body should tear when God is speaking. And now understood when the children of Israel were saying that, no, Moses, we don't want to hear again. You know, I now say, okay, because when God is speaking, it's like they are using something to stretch you. So when he finished like that, I was still struggling to look through this light. What is, who is speaking to me? I was still in fear. What is this? I was still looking. My mind did not go to the angels again. Are they standing there? What happened? I did not know. I was, a bright light was just in front of me. I cannot see well. The light, when I open my eyes to see, the light will be painting my eyes. I will close it like this, try to block the light so that I will be able to glance through. Nothing. After some time, when I struggle, struggle like this, he decided by the power of God, Jesus decided that let me make myself known to her. And then as I do my hand again to open the eye to see again, I saw a being standing in front of me. Since I was kneeling down, my eyes opened, I saw the feet of this being standing in front of me. When I saw down, it was wearing a golden sandals. The feet was like ice block. It's like glass. It's like a carved glass. Father, help me. I cannot put the right word, but it's not a human flesh. It's like a glass. You know when you have ice block, you'll be seeing some kind of shiny thing inside. An ice block that you see some things inside the ice block. So, when he was standing like that, I saw this body. It's like they carved a glass. And this glass, like... It's like they carve something, but it's like transparent something. And inside this body, you will not see any vein moving, but it was like a sprinkling something inside. And then when you stand like this, I saw a two holes in his feet. These two feet, as he was standing, there's a two big holes there. And then I started looking, going up to look. How will the face be if this person's feet is not like human being? It's like a glass or ice block. I cannot discover. It's a transparent something like when they carve something like that. And then I start looking at this person going up, going up, going up. When I reach at his face, it's like the light that I was seeing that was talking to me. It was like the light was on his face. How can I describe this light to my understanding? It's like when you carry a torch. A touch light and carry it to that zinc as those women also that have some holes in it. Put it like that. How the light will be coming out in different holes. This was how the light was coming out of his face. Different, the, the light was coming out everywhere. And then his eyes was, was changing. Is it flame? Is it blue? Is it this? It was changing. And then when he did his hand to me like this, I was kneeling down. I saw the same mark on his leg in his hand and then I, as he stretched his hand to me like this it's witness to my body that he's trying to raise me up and then I carry my own little hand put it in his palm I noticed that my hand was very tiny in his palm Amen Thank you Jesus and then he carried this his big thumb like when you want to raise somebody you will press the person like this to raise the person up so when I put my own small hand, this is my own tiny hand, put it inside his own, I saw the big gap. But when I put it there, it's like power, it's like cold something. Pass through my own body, enter my heart. My mentality, my heart changed. All the wickedness when I was thinking in hell, if I come back, God, I hate my sister, I hate my pastor, the hatred that is in hell. You that say you love your husband, and my husband says, if, if I don't do this, he will, dis, uh, will send me away. Because of your love for your husband, you die. When you enter hell fire, you will hate your husband a thousand times. There is a spirit in hell that you will hate anybody. Is he your pastor? If they show you your pastor in hell, both of you will be fighting in eternity. Because you will be angry with that person. So that hatred that was in my heart, all those wicked thoughts that is in hell, even towards God, I was like, God, you are wicked. I even, I blaspheme, I blaspheme God seriously here. I said, Jesus, you are a liar. You deceive us. You say you will not leave us rather for second, including the offer. God, you did not want me. You did not send your angels to warn me. You just decided to keep quiet. Now I'm here. Now you have sent me to, I hate you. I say all kind of words against God. 
But when I lay my hand in his hand, it's like, like when you turn a book, all the evil thoughts just turn. And then I felt some kind of cold sensation in my body. It's like they put me inside deep freezer for years. That was how, not the cold that would make me to shiver, but some kind of sweet kind of cold. Like you will also want that kind of cold to be circulating in your body. When he pressed his hand like this on me, looking at me face to face, and then he said to me with a powerful smile, nobody can smile like I cannot smile, because the smile was really a good smile. When he smiled to me like this, and then he said the word before he raised me up, he said, I am Alpha, the Omega. I am Jesus, your Lord, that died for you. Hey, he reflects on me. What I was saying about him, he heard. Is it my turn now for him to judge me? Because I use evil word. I curse him. Father, show mercy. Because the punishment was too much. You cannot get anything right. You will just be hating everybody. Every word will be coming out of your mouth. When you raised me up and said this word, tears did not come out of my eyes, but I was looking sorrowful in the sense of, ha, ah, he still loved me like this. And then something come to me. I said to myself, is it true the Jesus we are reading about in the Bible? Am I the one seeing Jesus? It's like somebody to be there to be my witness. Can they take picture with me and him? So that we tell people that I have seen this Jesus. Pastors, many pastors in the world have not seen Jesus. So me, I'm so great. I've seen him. So I was admiring him. I said, hey, so me, I'm seeing Jesus. He said, true. He know many things he run in my mind. And then he just say, welcome to my kingdom. Heaven, me. What I saw behind him now was two gigantic angels. I used to say God so loved us very well because if he's angry with us, only one angel alone would destroy the whole world. Because the mighty, these angels, they look. The way they look, the way God created these ones, you will know that you should not disobey God. Because somebody that is mightier than you, bigger than you, stronger than you, is fearing God. You that you are like an ant. When God says, don't do this, you are doing it. You will fear God when you see God in the judgment road. You yourself will know that is this being I was, when he said don't lie, I was lying, I was playing with him, you will fear him. So when I saw these two angels behind him, very mighty, very big, see their legs, see their feet, very big. Their wings was very wide and long. They were walking behind him like this, gently following him. And then I noticed something. My own leg was touching this ground. But his own was suspended up the year. But it was working very well. And I say, eh, this God is powerful. What is holding him up the year? When I came back, I'm studying the Bible, I came to know that Jesus, if you walk upon the sea, it never gets wet. What a powerful God. So when we went in, he now stretched his hand to me. I now see, I saw human being. When I was in hellfire those times, I thought that nobody is in heaven because the crowd of people I enter hellfire with and the people I saw, that even in hellfire I did not see the ending, but those few people I saw before me that were inside the fire like sea, the kind of way the fire was turning, the, the population of people in hellfire. And the second time Jesus took me again to hellfire, began to show me department with the brightness of his body, was lightening hellfire. I saw people, I saw people, crowd of people, they were together jamming themselves in pain, crying together like this. You see multitude of people in hell. So when I was that time I was there, I thought that nobody is in heaven, God is just wicked in us. So all of us, we are going to hellfire. But when I enter heaven, I saw human being there countless human beings. If those ones they make it to heaven, you, you will make it to heaven. There is no excuse you are going to give God. Because there are people too, that we are human beings like you. They struggle, they beheaded them, they persecuted them, they stoned them to death. You, thank God, they are only using mouth to preach against you. You are giving up. Did they use knife to cut your head? So, when I entered this place called heaven, I saw human being very happily. You will see them by partition. Is he under the tree? Is he two will be talking? Is it this one is walking? But one thing I notice, as they are walking and passing, including the angels, when they reach before Jesus, he said, everybody will prostrate. They will worship him. 
Everybody was doing. They wear white garment. They were smiling towards us. When Jesus was walking with me, you will turn. You see them smiling. They are welcoming. They are happy to say, ah, so you have come. They were very happy. I was happy too, thinking that as Jesus is walking with me, he's carrying me to my own mansion, not knowing that I was just there to see. And then, these people were looking glorious, very shining bright. They were smiling. I did not see any old person there to say the face is squeezed. No, they were looking shy. It's like light is coming out of their body. They were very happy, very looking very well. Everybody with white gown, looking very glorious. There is no jealousy there to say, eh, your own is beautiful. My own. You will see uniqueness in us, in them. And then when Jesus now said, he stretched his hand to me like this and showed me mansions. This side that I've read for you, in my father's house, there are many mansions. It is true. I saw different mansions with different styles. Different styles. Everybody, according to your work, how you suffer for Christ, how you preach this gospel, how you win so for God, how you spread this gospel, how you fought for Christ to expand, to expand his kingdom. All of us will not get the same mansion. But you have different mansions according to your reward. And it's very powerful. Jesus now said to me, these particular mansions you are saying, these are people that are evangelizing for me on earth. And then I respected those ones that are those way up and now, let me share the good news to you. In my country those days, that time I was, sister, I was Linda, not Sister Linda. If I see somebody is bringing paper, sister, sister, can I share the word? I say I'm very busy. We see them as if they are idle people. We mock at them. We look them as if, see these people, they are going up and down. Because sometimes you look, they look dirty. They don't look presentable. They'll be holding one bag like this, one microphone. Jesus love you. We'll be passing and looking as if these ones, they are not even socialized. Who are they? I never knew these people are so important than even the president of my country. That when God now says, see the mansion of only those that are going up and that sharing my word, evangelizing, winning souls for me. And now say, hey. So this is, these people will see them like they are careless, like they are idle. They go up and down, be doing crusade, go up and down, be sharing house to house, knocking door. We think that they don't have anything to do. And then when I was thinking like that, the Lord Jesus now said to me, but not all. And then they said to me, these ones I'm talking about, these are the ones that they are doing it with a clean heart. They are the ones that are sacrificing all they have just to win a soul for me. When I'm in my throne, when I sit down in my throne in heaven, when I look down on the earth, I will see them, how they are trekking, going to do my work, how they are using their, all their strength, their money, just to give out. They don't care if they sleep hungry. They don't care if they don't have anything. I see them when they are giving their last in their paws. They are, please, sister, take this. Come to our church. I've seen them how they are using all they have just to win souls for me. They don't think of rewarding because they know my word when I say seek it first, the kingdom of God. But there are many of them that are going out there in my name, but they are looking for money. These are not the people. They have gotten their reward already or not. Their aim and objective is to go and gather money for themselves. When they preach, they will, they, will, they will be expecting money. They will use all lives to take money from people, all in the name of I'm going for evangelism. They don't put their hope and trust in me. So I came to know that there is two types of evangelism people that will go to heaven, and the one will go to heaven, the other will go to hell. Jesus says, sometimes they will say, God, I want to go and preach, but you know I don't have money. They cannot sacrifice for me. And then Jesus now said, this set of mansion again, these are believers that have died, they have missed their mansions. Go and tell them, let no man steal your crown. This is it. They backslide and they do not restore. They die thinking that they have long time. Now, after working very hard to own this mansion, at the end time, they backslide. So if you are here, you were before a holy child. Some of these women that are putting your ear in, if you hear them that before, my parents, we came from this church, we know the truth, we know the even pastors that they are preaching heresies today. If you check their foundation, their background, they were preaching holiness, righteousness before. No, no adornment. But because they see other 
satanic pastor, they are getting money in this day to the diver. You will regret it because your mansion, other person will take it if you don't restore it today. And then Jesus now said, let us go. As we are going like this, he was smiling to me. I noticed that the place in heaven was star. And I remember one time my pastor was telling me, will we put on gold because gold is in heaven, we will even match on it. So this one, let's just put it on our body because we'll go to heaven, we'll match on it. So we believe that there's gold street in heaven, all the, the, the road in heaven is star. So when I saw it, I believe. I said, ah, so this thing is true. So truly all over this place, only the small I have seen is gold. Ah, this Bible is complete. Before we read it, we'll just be thinking, contemplating, is it true? And then Jesus now said, let's go further. As we are walking, I'm seeing different things. I'm seeing different things. I'm seeing different things. And then I saw a light. This light was the light that is bright in heaven. I look up, I did not see the sun, I did not see the star, I did not see moon. But what is making heaven to be so bright? And looking colorful, changing the, changing the atmosphere, changing colors, changing the atmosphere. What is it? I look, upon, I look up a little bit. And then I saw a light. It's like a, a throne, like a chair, a golden chair. But inside this golden chair, it's like a dew, like a thick smoke in that place. When it's waving like this, you will see... A something like something like a chair or a or a, a bed or whatever you will see when they do it's like when the cloud is fading you will see inside and then later you see the cloud do it again when the cloud when the dew is opening a little i will see a, a chair but i do not see the end i will see a golden something is there and then i saw this this place was the one projecting light it's like this projector that is bringing out light this was how the light was coming out of that place brighten all the place and the light was changing it was giving all kind of color to heaven this kind of beautiful place and then i now say ah, ah is it that god went and planted the light there the power bank there what is this light where is it i was just confused hey no sun no moon nothing but this place the kind of bright light that was coming there so i was struggling to look who is there? What is, who is pulling the light? What is, I was all confused. He stretched his hand and tapped my shoulder and turned. I turned to him. He was smiling. He said, that place you are seeing, my daughter, is the throne of my father. When I came back, I was asking pastors. And one of my pastors was telling me, yes, it's in the Bible. I said, wow. So truly all these things are reality to my eyes. And then I saw two angels standing there. The other angels, the other angel was standing with a royal attire like warfare, attire like this Roman soldier putting this breastplate, crossing a big sword, very big, very big sword. Very big sword, it crosses like this, very heavy. If they put it on any human being, I think that human being will be falling down. Very big sword like this, and they stand there like this. But dress, you will know that he's dressing like a war attire. And then very handsome, and he's very tall. And then I look at him like this. Jesus now said to me, that do you know who is this angel? And now say no. I was very excited to know who is he, very handsome, very fine. And then Jesus now said to me, this is the angel you people used to call. This is Angel Michael. I said, wow, me, see Angel Michael. So this is Angel Michael. No wonder it's a warrior angel, very mighty, very big. See the sword cross his neck, very big sword. See his hand, very big. Stand very tall. I don't know how many feet, cubit tall. Very high and mighty like that. And now so no wonder we like calling because truly this one just visits one kingdom of darkness. All of them will scatter. And then Jesus now said, let's go. We keep on walking. I saw angels flying with cloth in their hand. They were moving up and down. But when they reach in front of Jesus, when they are passing, it's just like when somebody is crossing in front of you, they will say, they will pursue, they will greet, and then the Lord will smile, and then they will pass, they will be doing like this, and then Jesus take, say, do you see, heaven is preparing for my children. All those clothes you are seeing in their hand, these are the dresses of the saints. 
Soon I'll visit the wall. I am dressed, all ready to go and take my children. Me, you are sending me back, and you are saying you are dressed. Am I going to come back? So when Jesus now said to me, I am sending you back to go and tell her, my heart was bitter. I said, me, going back. What am I even coming to do? What is even in this country? This world that you don't want to live is because you have not seen heaven. When you see heaven, even they say, you just give back to a one baby, a one month baby. Can't you go back to take care of the baby? You will say, they will take care of the baby there. God, please, let them take care of the baby. I don't want to leave this place. That is how heaven is. Before when I was in hell, Jesus, send me back. Oh, when I'm in heaven now, I don't even think of send me back. So when Jesus said like that, my heart was bitter. And then Jesus turned to me. You don't need to say it out of your mouth. In your heart, when you sin, it registered there. How did Jesus know that my heart was not sweet because of that statement? And then Jesus now looked at me like this and say I hate selfish people that smiley face Jesus was smiling to me my daughter taking time showing me the face change for you to know that every sin you committed you committed a sin a day a hour a week the way the Lord is angry with you if you know you will restore yourself instantly you will not sleep on that sin you will not cover that sin you will restitute that sin now you will not keep that secrecy you will not fear no man to restitute that sin you will run now 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 confess it no matter what happens let it happen because if you know when you are a, when you are a sinner when you commit a sin the way God is angry just that thing the face of God was changed and said to me I hate selfish people you do not deserve to be here. That is how judgment starts. He said, you were working for the devil. You were a prostitute in my sight. And then I now say, Lord, I was not a prostitute. Because on earth, we only believe that prostitutes is those that go on the beach, stand, they will take you in the night, they will drop you by giving money. I did not do like that. Jesus now looked at me and smiled and said, your ways and my ways are not the same. Your thoughts and my thoughts are not the same. On earth, you people see those ones only as prostitutes. Yes, you are right. But let me tell you who I see again as prostitute. Anyone that is not married legally is committed for nakedness, a prostitute. Anyone that have married legally is having girlfriend, living a rightful wife or rightful husband, having boyfriend, cheating on the husband, cheating on the wife. That man, that woman is a prostitute in my side. Sex. It's for couples, married, legal people. So I came to know that so prostitutes are plenty in the church. Because from pastor daughters, pastor son, choir, how many of them are virgin? Sleeping even with the pastors. And we are busy dancing in the church, thinking we are going to heaven, not knowing that many in the world are prostitutes. Jesus said those that are committing fornication, making love, sex, you are not legally married, rightful married. You are busy having boyfriend, sleep with pastor, sleep with brother, sleep with sister, up and down. And God, you know, uh, no man has come for me yet. I have feeling. That one is your own explanation. You are a prostitute before God. You have married legally. You are leaving your wife. Go and sleep with another woman. You have girlfriend. You have student. You student. You married woman. You have your old boyfriend. You are still going up and down. Your friend is making click for you. If you know your, uh, the way you are with God, with God, you will restitute today. And then my heart said, hey, who will go? this heaven, we are playing. Pastors are not preparing people. You are lucky you are hearing this. Many people, when they die, they're thinking that they are going to heaven because they have built a church for God. They are working, they have bought jeep for pastor. They are the best giver in the church. People say they are good, they are giving them, they don't believe that that is the Christianity they are going to heaven. When they before God, they go will start telling that you are not going, and they will see themselves that ah, so this thing I was doing that my pastor, you are here listening to pastor, and then Jesus now said, Let's go. I'm sending you back with a message to the world. It carried me to a place. We sat there. I was seeing a vast land which my eye cannot see the ending. Heaven is too big, you cannot even see the last side. 
but I was seeing people, plenty of people. They were just it's like when you you display white white thing on the on the ground, see white all over, very beautiful. You see mansions, different styles. The material that God used to build is not this one. Is it is it gold? Is this the way God used the power He used to build those mansions? Anyone that got a mansion in heaven that God give you, you will not tired of admiring your house. So when Jesus now said, Let's go, we went and sat in a place. And then Jesus said to me, Three times, my church is dirty. When he's saying like this, in heaven, you will know that God is saying something. It was a, a silent. It was, it's like a power, like when the weather is dark. Three times to me, where I was sitting with him very closer, it's like, it's like he's descending on me. God is angry. Jesus is angry. My church is dirty three times. Me, I was just shaking where I was sitting there. Because this one is so close to me when he's talking with all his power. My church is dirty. My church is dirty. My church is dirty. My body is shaking. He did his hand like this very quick. And then I saw the wall. It's like an ice cube. Everybody, just a small thing like that. Everywhere you are. In, the, in darkness, in hotel, secret occulting meeting, you pastor, you are hiding from your member in the night. Jesus is looking at you and laughing at you. If you enter under, under, under the sea, he's seeing you there. I was seeing human being, practical sin, those that are going up and down, those that are doing evil, those that are doing this, those that are preaching, this all kind of thing I was seeing. And then, after some time, Jesus now began to turn like this. I began to see different denominations with different pastors standing there. I was preaching. When he showed me like this, the Lord now told me that he paused it in one denomination. I saw this pastor with a, with a, a, a calling here, like the pastor is doing waves on his head. And the pastor was wearing this tight fitting dressing as these pastors they used to dress today. They, 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 the trousers of their suit will be very tight on their body and wear those tight coats. You will see all their manhood shape, everything is stamped. And it was bleaching. He put a big ring in his finger with a chain. And then they were waving his hair. It's like he dyed his hair. They get away. They cover it very well for him like that. And he was preaching. And then Jesus zoomed it. For me to hear and see what they were doing. It was a large congregation more than this. And then the pastor was saying some things. He was talking about his travel. He was talking about how, he's, how he has prospered. He was talking to them, making fun. And then I saw people will leave their seat. They will laugh round and go and sit, go and sit down back. They will laugh. When the pastor says something, somebody will get up. Laugh, 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 laugh. Some people will stand up and laugh and sit down. And then Jesus turned to me and said, they have turned my church into comedy. My house has turned into comedy. My children are not afraid, they are not afraid again to sit before me with sin. He said, the pastors are not telling my people, my children, what will save them. They have turned my house into comedy. Now, sinners will sit before me for years. No repentance, no fear of me. Chronic sinners, all those sinners, no lesbian, all those homosexuals. All those abalists, they are the leaders now in the church. All sharp, why yeah? They are the ones. No fear of God. People will go to church from Monday. They will go to church every month on Sunday. Prayer service all night. They have anger. They have malice. They have bitterness. They are not talking to their neighbor for years. They don't even bother about that. But they are still going to church. The Lord says, see. And then the Lord Jesus now says, all what he is telling my people is not what will save them. And then Jesus now said, these are the fathers you people are referencing now. Nothing in him condemned from his dressing and his doctrine and his life will take any man to heaven. Anything you copy from that pastor. And then he turned to the mama in the church. Zoomed the mama very well for me. The mama did not cover her head. It was using one long attachment, false nails with long, long fingernails, short dress. And then Jesus now said to me, these are the mamas that you people, the mothers now that you people are referenced and calling them mama. 
she is carrying the attire of Jezebel. These are the daughters of Jezebel that are defiling my church. Do you know how many men have lost after her now sitting there with her naked dressing? Jesus said, nobody, go and tell them, be a prophet, be a prophetess, be whosoever that know my word, that have this attire of the devil. No heaven for that person. I was dressed, I was not dressing like this before. But when Jesus told me that, be whosoever with the attire of the with Je, or Jezebel, he was talking about Vivon, talking about Yarin, talking about short skirt, exposing dressing, makeup, no heaven. He said, go and do all your preaching, do all your service, your worship. That's why he has said, many are called, but few are chosen. Many pastor wife, there are many that are putting this in. They don't cover hair, they put lipstick, wear short skirt, their breast is out, split skirt, they are busy praying, doing signs and wonder. No heaven for those people. And then Jesus said to me, He showed me the choir, including the pastor. He said, Do you know how many women of my daughter that are lost in after his look? And then he showed me the choir that we are sitting down. And then Jesus now said, the choir of this generation today are the ones defiling the church. These are the ones that Satan is using. They are singing to the devil, not to me. Many choirs that are in the world today, their hand is full of blood. They are the ones sleeping with the pastor in the church. They are the ones bringing the demonic thing to come and show off in the church. They are the ones bringing loss. Because when you see them, with short, short scare. The Lord now said, tell them. He looked at me like this. I am not a naked girl. I am not a naked girl. I say, lift up holy hands. Their hands is filthy. I cannot be all nakedness in my eyes. When they call upon me, I don't look down. Because all of them are in nakedness. All this thing, you are naked, pulling your breast. Doing this, going up and down, committing sin. God is angry with you. And then the Lord now says, see the congregation. When the Lord zoomed the congregation for me, I now saw every man with his own seed on the forehead. I came to know that so half of the congregation, maybe everybody there is a sinner. Is he lying, witchcraft, fornication, occultism? Some people will have four, some people will have five, some will have two written on their forehead, malice, backbiting. Some will have jealousy, envy. Some will have fornication, adultery, lying. Some will have stealing and robber. All this kind of sin is on their forehead. You think you can hide? Your sin, you are hiding it in your heart. It's on your forehead. As you commit sin, it's there, like that. So, when Jesus showed me this thing, Jesus now says, see, they are sitting, devil is keeping them busy. They are going to hellfire. Nobody with one sin will enter my kingdom. I am sending you to them. Go and tell them, anyone that is having a sin of unforgiveness, malice, backbiting, jealousy, evil thoughts, lusting, adultery, smoking, drinking alcohol, selling it, putting on the attachment of devil, prostitution, the law begin to call. Occultism, all those wicked spirits, raping, all those wicked things that you are doing. The Lord said, no heaven for you. Pray till the roof come down. If you don't try to tangle that anger, that backbiting, that lusting, that fornication, that adultery in your heart, no heaven for you. Your Christianity, you are walking in vain. And then Jesus now said to me, they are busy telling me to kill their enemy. Die, die, die. Tell them I don't answer that kind of prayer. And I'm not part of that prayer. That prayer is of the devil. It's a prayer of wickedness and revenge. Tell them, I say, all oh, vengeance is mine. If I answer this one prayer that I should kill all our enemy, my daughter, I will kill all of you on earth. Because this one is laughing to this one. But see the heart. This one is bitter with this one. This one is bitter with this one. This one that is sitting here is dating uh, this one husband. This one in the church will be dating sister husband. The sister did not know. And this sister is praying that I should kill all her enemy. 
I will kill this. I will kill this. I will kill, I will kill everybody. This pastor, junior pastor, is wishing the senior pastor to die. This senior pastor is wishing this one to die, not to take his position. If I answer their prayer, I will kill everybody. So tell her that prayer of die, die is not of me. And then I say, but Lord, you say we should not suffer the witch to die. He look at me and smile. He say, you know scripture. The Lord now told me, it's good to ask questions. Ask him. He was happy with me because I want to know. He now said, my daughter, when I was on earth, tell me those ones that they were possessed, which one did I kill? Your prayer is for me to kill the one that is bewitching you. Father, kill anybody that is standing on my way. Kill that person. Anyone that says I will not get married, kill that person. Anyone that says I will not prosper, kill that person. Be my mother, be my uncle, be my auntie, be my child. Let that person die. Oh, for only you. What was I doing? I was casting out the spirit out of them. No human being that will plan to do wicked if the devil did not possess that person. Is the spirit that is inside that they will cast out and tell them that the spirit don't die until the final day of their judgment. So you cannot say, God, kill Satan. You are wasting your time. Satan cannot die. So Jesus now said, that prayer is a deception prayer. It brings hatred in their heart for each other. Anybody now in your family is a witch. Your pastor, go and say your mother is a witch. You will hate your mother till your mother die. You will not even go for the barrier. You will not give your mother food. And you say you want to go to heaven. Jesus said that heart has been polluted. Because he said, he has told us that we should love our enemy. So how many of you today? You are not going to the village. You have abandoned your mother. You are not even sending food for her. Because your pastor told you that anytime you send money, she will sit on the money. It's because you are not a born again. Because if truly your mother is a witch, only one prayer alone will deliver her. And then Jesus now said, Go and warn them. All those ones that have this sin in them, gossip, anger, backbiting, malice, unforgiveness, jealousy, stealing, you are in your office. You are stealing money. Say, this is government money. God is not here. Jesus said, anything you commit on this earth is a sin. Be in your office. Be in your room. Be in your business. Be anywhere in the house of God. He's singing to him. And no sinner will enter heaven. All liars, you are lying on your age. You are lying on your body. Dye your hair. I will come in there. Jesus said, I should warn those ones that are dying their hair. You are dying, putting dye on your hair. You are telling God you know how to do your hair. God give you gray hair. You are dying it because you want to continue sin, deceiving the people that you are young so that you continue to live. You don't want to get old. Jesus said you are doing a great sin. He said one of those ones that are, that are doing fornication. You are not married, you are committing sin, sex. It's a sin, adultery. You are married, you are leaving your husband, your wife. You say, my wife, my husband is not around. You are committing sin. Smoking, alcohol, drugs, clubbing, carnival, abalist business. You are still going to all those juju people. You are going to prophet. You say, this is a prophet. But he's giving you the same thing abalists are giving you. Put this, soak this, drink this, rub this. It's, it's satanic. Occultism. The Lord now said disobedient, naked dressing. The Lord said, all those, my daughters, my sons that are in naked dressing. Those boys that are putting down their trousers down. You call yourself a pastor. Your son is dressing. The trousers is down. You are not even bothered. You are allowing your daughter to follow you to church with half short skirt. The breast is out. Long with on. You cannot control the house. You are busy saying you are a pastor. Jesus said all those ones that are putting naked dressing. All those ones that have lost him. Rape. Attachment on their body. Jewelings, the Lord talk about wedding ring. I'm coming there. He said, Tight, those that are not paying tight, they are robbing him, and those that are not paying correct tight, they are, they are robbing him, and those that are used, they are using dirty money to pay tight. He said, Tell them I'm not receiving their money. You are prostituting the money you come to church well, after going to nightclub. Prostitute, they're giving money on Saturday, Sunday, come and give tight. The Lord says for you are your pastor. You are a hand robber. You are doing business. The business is pollution. You are busy duping people in the market. You are cheating on people. You know that you are not faithful in the price you are giving. You gather that money say, I'm giving time. God said, don't receive that time. You are stealing in your office. 
You are changing figure. You gather money and come and give tithe. You say, God, I'm giving to you. The Lord said, you don't know that money. It's a dirty money. And I should tell you, he is not a dirty God. You are stealing your husband's money. Come and give tithe. The Lord say, you are a, you are a thief and you will not go to heaven. Including your husband's money, you must tell your husband. Stealing your wife's money. Steal, you child, you are stealing your, your parents' money. You come and give God. The Lord say anything that did not belong to you, to, it belongs to somebody, let the person know and give you order before you take it. So if you are here, you have been stealing your boss, stealing your mother, stealing your husband, stealing the church money, pastor, you are using the money anyhow, the Lord say if you don't restitute and confess it, it's going to be very dangerous for you in hellfire. Fighting, the Lord said, trust us. It's an abomination for women. You are busy following your pastor. Woman trousers, man trousers. The Lord did not tell me, tell them not to wear man. He said, women should not wear trousers. And as he has said it like this, it's in the Bible. He said, you are a disobedient child if you disobey his word. And the wrath of God will come upon all disobedient child. He said, anyone that is here, you are a second wife. You are a second wife. Or you husband, you have married somebody's wife. You have your first wife, he's still alive. He said, my first wife is a witch. She cannot put to bed. I've sent her away. I married another one. Or she's not obeying me. I've sent her away. You, that woman that is in that house, that you know that the first wife, your husband married legally, and the first wife is alive. It's in the village. It's in the city. He has traveled out of the country. You say, but they have divorced. Jesus said, he don't know divorce because he said, whatever you have joined together, let no man put asunder. The only asunder is death. When your, man, your husband died, your wife died, that is how you have right to remarry. He said, you are a second wife. You are a second husband. You know that woman is married. The wife, the husband is alive. You will not say, hey, I'm the, this or such. You tell you, no second wife, neither second husband. We die and go to heaven because you are living in adultery. The Lord now say, all those abortionists, you are busy committing abortion. Both you, the doctor. Both you, the, 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 the man that pregnated that woman. Both you, the woman that received the money to go and do abortion. The blood of that innocent soul is upon your head. Even you are a married woman, your husband said, like, well, we don't want this child again. God will understand. God said he did not understand that statement. So if you are committing abortion, you have a blood following you, that child. That you have killed innocently. Unbelief. You are doubting. Everything you do, you don't believe. It's of the devil. Because Jesus said, if you live in unbelief, that simply means you do not believe his word. That he can do great and mighty things. You don't believe that these things are sinful. Like some people don't believe he are in his sin. You will go and believe in hellfire. Lesbian. You are busy sleeping girls to girls. Woman to woman. The Lord say it's an abomination. Homosexual, your brother, your sister, your son is doing this. You are busy enjoying it. You are doing it. You man, you are doing it to a big man. Some of these pastors are homosexual, sleeping with those boys in the church. You are busy encouraging it. The Lord says, if you have done something like that, you must confess. There is a great demon that is following you in that sin. And then, I don't know if daddy will give me a chance. Daddy is not around. Let me go quickly. To hellfire and tell you what Jesus said. When Jesus finished it, Jesus now told me about wedding ring. Jesus told me that go and tell them that Satan knew that there will be a time that I will bring awareness to the world that dwelling is a sin. And Satan went ahead and deceived their leaders that wedding ring. So that they will know that dwelling, wedding ring is not part of dwelling. Tell them that ring is part of dwelling. And tell them that there is no place in the Bible that I command any man or pastor or whosoever to join any couple with wedding ring. Anyone that die you will come and show me in my world. And if it's not there where I commanded them to wed with ring, the person is a disobedient child. Tell them that I did not give any scripture to join two together with a ring. What joined them together is my word. It is not a ring that will make your husband to be faithful to you. It is not a ring that will make your wife to submit to you. It is not a ring that will make your wife not to cheat on you. 
But it's my word that will make your wife to fear and respect you. It's my word that will make your husband to obey and love you because I've commanded your husband to love you as he loves me, love himself. I've commanded the wife in my word to submit to the husband. So it is not the ring that you are praying to for your husband to change. That wedding ring is the devil in your home. And that ring is not of me because jewelry. I've got commanded people to take it out of their body. Go and tell all those pastors that are joining people with ring, saying that this is a demarcation I will know that they are married. Tell them that they are disobeying my word. There is no way in the Bible I say they should wed with ring. And anyone that did not bring out the scripture that say they should join two together with ring, that person will land in hellfire. And then Jesus now say, there are things that they are doing, they are using in the church. That is a sin that Satan is giving them to do signs and wonders. And these things are not coming from me. The Lord now said, let's go to hellfire. When the Lord took me to hellfire, as he just said, let's go to hellfire, I saw ourselves entering this, this dark place. But that time when I was entering there, it was not bright like the Lord owned now. It was really dark that the devil was turning me going down but when i enter with jesus the light that was coming out of jesus body the brightness that was coming out of jesus body was brightening hellfire where we were standing i would see the light the light was coming out of his body and as we enter that place jesus now as we enter hellfire people started shouting jesus Everybody know the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords is here. Everybody in the fire struggling for him to see him or her. They were struggling, calling on Jesus. Even those ones that did not believe. I believe in you now. Jesus, show me mercy. I will worship you. I will do anything you say. Father, forgive me. This one that they are ashamed to confess their sin. Witches are wizards. They will tell God, yes, Lord. I confess it now. I'm a witch. I'm going to confess. I will not be ashamed again. God, send me back. Jesus will now look at them and say, it's too late. This one will be shouting, Jesus, I will do this. I will follow you. I will not follow the world again. I will listen to you. Jesus, don't let me to suffer here. Take me out of here. This one will say, God, I need water. Pity me. Jesus, have mercy. Everywhere, the name of Jesus. You don't believe the name of Jesus here, you will believe it in hellfire. You don't call the name of Jesus here, you will call it in hellfire. See, Muslims are shouting, that now I know. Have mercy. I saw Gaddafi with my eyes saying, now I know you are the way. Say, forgive me. Send me back. I will go and tell all my Libya people that you are the only way. Please, have mercy. He did not even say send me back to go and be a president. It's to go and preach Jesus now. You are here struggling for material things. You are here struggling for position. You are here struggling for other things. The better thing for your life, the only thing that will save and do good is when you work for Jesus. Even in your office, Promote Jesus there. That is the only thing that will save you. Gaddafi was not thinking of coming to rule again. He was thinking to come and pray Jesus. And then he said, Jesus now said, it's too late. Jesus now said to me, I'll show you department of people. And when they were calling Jesus, this is how water was running inside. That is the time even me too came to see that there are some punishment that the, those people, their own is greater than my own. The way they will open human beings like chicken. The way the demon will be slicing people. The people, they will slice the person, cut this hand, cut this leg. The person is still crying. How God do power, how God do mysterious power in that place, I don't know. Even the fire, you will see somebody has born to score, but the skull is still talking. Ask him for mercy. You will see somebody that he has born. The eye has come out. The face, all the body has born. The mouth, all the body is looking like, like, like roast meat. You cannot know is this a man or a woman born all over. The person is still asking for mercy. God show me mercy. You will be asking, what is he going to do? Every part of your body has born. But the person is not dying. He's still living inside the fire. There is life in the fire. 
And then Jesus took me to the department of people. I saw liars. How they are slicing their tongue. Slicing their tongue. I saw smokers, drunkards. They were giving a liquid fire. Just like what they did to me. I came to know that. So this is how they are torturing those ones. That are drinking alcohol. Those ones that are selling cigarettes. Smoking cigarettes. Smoking all these hard drugs they are taking. Drugs addicts. You are inhaling it. This is how the devil was giving them liquid fire. And then those ones that will sniff cocaine or whatever. Thing because that is what I will say. They will bend their head to sniff the fire in their in their nose. They were crying. There's one department Jesus carried me. I saw those homosexuals. I cry. I cry. I said, God, have mercy. Have mercy. We did not know. They did not know it was like this. Because if the pastors, the ministers, the ushers, the choir, the evangelism people, they are telling people the truth. The sins should have reduced. But people don't know that the terrible pain is waiting for them. Because that's why you see men, they will be just initiating themselves to almost say, go to the, the prison, go to the university. Boys sleeping with boys. They don't know the terrible sin they are committing. When they carry me to the department of that place, homosexuals, the demon bend them down like this. Bend them very well. And carry a hot red iron from the fire. Begin to insert it in their anus. It's hurting. The two will come out of their mouth. Then we do like this. Fire! God! Jesus looked at me and said, God, one day! He was crying. Me too was crying. I said, God, please. I'm confused. Jesus, please have mercy on them. Jesus, please have mercy on these people, God. The Lord looked at me and said, it is too late. Go and want man. Go and tell them to come out of their sea. Jesus is crying for you. I am telling you, he's crying for you. If you see what people are passing through in hell, you will not sit down and see your family member. He see. And then Jesus take me to another place. He says, see what they are doing. All those ones that are coming it's a portion. I don't go. Jesus is a mercy. And then the Lord said to me, I want you to watch very well. I said, God, have mercy on them. They were hopeless. They are looking at Jesus. Father, show me mercy. Father, show me mercy. <laughs> Some of them will be saying, God, nobody to take care of me. That's why I was prostituting. Nobody to help me, God. I never knew I was sitting. My pastor did not want me. My people did not want me. Jesus don't put the blame on me. I did not know. And truly, some of them did not know. Because you refused to tell her the truth. Truly, some of them did not know because they are in the church. You are. You are not telling them the truth. You are covering the truth because you want their money. You are telling them, my daughter, go and shine. Go and prosper. You don't know what they are doing for prosperity. When they die, they go to hell. They are suffering there. This youth are suffering in hell. You gather youth, or you will tell them is to go and prosper. You will tell them, don't be a poor, don't, don't be not live in poverty. Go and make a brighter future. Or you will gather them to tell them it's evil. They will be going to sin. Go and see how the youth are crying here. And you pastors that are here, majority of you, when the testimony of Sister Linda come out, many of your youth, your women, your wife, your children, they were changing because you are wicked and selfish. You don't want them to know the truth because you're thinking that your church will get scattered. You begin to tell them using scripture is a lie. I'm telling you, you will suffer it in hell of You will suffer in the hellfire. Pity these ones in your hand. Please, pastors, pity them. Tell them the truth. Pity them. They are going to hell. Women, pity yourself. What these pastors are telling you, put on your ring. Don't do it. I am telling you, people are crying hell unless you are not dying. If you know you will never die, put it on. But if you know one day you will die. You will go before God for judgment. These pastors are wicked. 
These ministers are wicked. You, you are here today. You go up and down deceiving people. Don't believe in Sister Lina Messi. You call yourself an evangelist. You, you are going up and be telling people you have changed before, but you listen to your pastor. Go and burn that city. Were you there where she died? It is a lie. You convert and change. I am telling you, there is only one author and finisher of our faith, which is Jesus. And he has told you that if you put this thing on, you are going to hellfire. Listen to your bishop. Listen to your GS. Listen to your overseer. I am telling you, they will not be there that day to defend you. Your pastor will not be there. Are you pastor? You are fighting Jesus. He's sending message to the world to change his people. If you don't want to tell them the truth, resign and give somebody that have the boldness to preach this truth. You are busy looking for a crowd. I will come and tell you in the department of pastors, let you know your ending. You will not see none of your member there. Only you will suffer it. And then Jesus took me again to another place. Jesus said, see. Jesus was crying. Jesus was weeping. I was weeping with him. Because see, people like this, some of them don't deserve to be there. Because nobody wants them. Some of them, they deserve to be there because when they hear it, they doubt it. They hard in their heart. I don't believe. It's a lie. Some of them, the love of the world. Hey, if I stop this now, if I stop this now, I will not do this. You die and go to hell. And then Jesus carried me to one side. And when Jesus carried me to that side, Jesus did not say anything. He just did his hand like this. And I saw somebody was coming out of that fire. I cannot recognize this person at all. Even if they, 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 even if they say, Sister Linda, who is this person? Even if they give me anything, I cannot be able to guess. Who is that person? I never knew it was my best of friend. My best friend that died two years before I get converted. And then this person came out of this fire. When this person came out of the fire, he was inside the fire, not that he came out like that. The Lord just did his power. Jesus is mighty. Jesus is powerful. When he did his hand like this, you will just see whosoever you want you to come out, it's you that will come out. How the power will fetch you inside that crowd of people. I don't know how God do it, but he said with him all things are possible. But I give you all the prayer because you are wonderful. When Jesus did his hand like this, I saw this being was coming out. His body was jumping with fire. When he come out like this, the beast stand like that. And then he said, God, have mercy on me. I saw this person don't have eyes again. How did he know? The eyes of born act like this. The body, the mouth have born. You will see the air. You will see it's like fire. Is, the blood you are seeing inside them is the fire. It's like inside your body. And then he said, Lord, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus was just quiet and looking at her. And then I was like, who is this person? And then the person said to me, Linda, please don't leave me here. I was shocked. I said, who are you? I don't know. And then he said, you don't know me again. It's your friend, Gifty. Linda, please. I screamed. I said, God, please take my friend out of here. Jesus looked at me and said, my daughter, go out one day. And then my friend said to me, Linda, please don't leave me here. Please beg Jesus for me. Please, I'm suffering. I'm suffering. I'm suffering. Since the day I die, I've landed here. I've not drink water. I've not tasted food. I've not stopped crying. Pain. I'm mercy of Jesus. And then Jesus said to us, it is too late. I look at my friend. And then my friend said, Lord, do me one favor, please. And then Jesus said, what? He said, let my father come here. And then, I know what she means. She said, my father is a reverend. My father was the one encouraging me, see. My father have never sat me down, tell me things to do. My father will see me with boyfriend, he will not bother. He will even give me the world to go and do clubbing or whatsoever. My father, I thought that he loved us, he spoiled us with money. But I never know, my father was sending me to hell. He know better than me, he never preached to me the way of God. 
How many of you here, you call yourself a pastor, a evangelist, a reverend, a woman leader, pastor wife. You are allowing your children to go up and down with boyfriend. Allow your children to be sitting in the house watching all kind of movie. Allow your children to be dressing anyhow in the house. Going up and down and say, I've talked, I've talked, I've talked. They are not telling, they are not changing. It's because you are not serious here. Because when you see that girl like that, imagine her now if he just drop dead before you, her fire direct. If you love your daughter, if you love your son, you will stand like a mother. If you want to do, he or she wants to do the sin, it should go outside, not in your house. But some of you call yourself pastor, your children are busy carrying girlfriend in the house. You say, I've talked, they don't listen to me, they are big boys, big girls in your house. The house that you have said is for Jesus, Jesus is not there. And what my friend was saying is true. The father loved them so much. I have many girls. They are my best of friends. The father will be all day like this. We give them money. Everybody go and do it. Thanksgiving in the church. Pastor children. The, the costume. They used to, some of them used to be in the choir. They will invite me to their church. The pastor will give them money. Because they are pastor daughter. They will dress very well. They are the ones singing in the church. Doing this. But daddy, you know we have Thanksgiving. I, don't, I want to buy this. They say our costume. The pastor will give them money. I'm a pastor. My birthday. I want to gather my friend. The pastor will give them money. All of us will go there. I know the father is a reverend. We greet her. We we'll go and dance. And enjoy ourselves. He will be laughing. My friend died of sickle cell. And they enter hell. We never knew. See how the decorator in the coffin. Put in a pink. Pink cloth. Paint her very well. Put We've on, especially we've on ahead. The father was crying, My daughter, I love. They paint her nails as if he's going for a They paint her lips, paint her very well. That time we are admiring, say, Ah, this, this, these people, they paint our friend very well. He was, she was like, She's sleeping. They put makeup. I never know that we are nailing her to, to hell. When I saw my friend, he said, Linda, please don't leave me here. <laughs> Linda, please don't leave me here. I beg you, please. I said, Jesus, please help me out. Jesus now said, it's too late. And then Jesus take me to another side. When we reach there, Jesus stand again. And then it didn't sound like this. The person I love so much in my life came out. And then the person looked at me. Instantly called my name. My daughter, please help me. I knelt down at the early feet of Jesus. I said, Go! Save my mother. Jesus, now look at me with the tears in her eyes. In his eyes, he said, Your mother did not know me, did not believe in me. She was a Muslim. I am telling you, if you have a Muslim family, you must be radical and pity them. Go and tell them, don't be afraid of them. We were sharing in the church, in the house. We are playing with it. Friday, my mother will be praying there. Sunday, we'll go to church. We'll be laughing. I never knew. What did I even knew that time? I never knew my mother was going to hell. I'm telling you. Sometimes if I sit down like this, I'm eating food. I'm drinking water. And then I say, I'm tired. I don't want to eat food again. I don't want to eat today. No water. The thing we done on me, I say, oh, my mother has not drank water for many years. Jesus, have mercy on us. You are here, you are playing. You don't even know what is happening here. And Jesus took me to the department of pastors, workers, leaders in the church. Their own department is more painful. It's more painful. It's like another part of hell under. Jesus said, let's go. These people that are here, Majority are caused. They are here because of the deception of their great pastors. <laughs> and Jesus took me there. We were up. They were right down. But when Jesus stood, looking down on them, the fire was boiling with them, was turning them. And then they noticed that somebody is there. You see our pastors, you see our workers, you see our leaders, you see our pastor's wife, our prophetess, prophet, they are struggling to come out, but the pit was very deep. Jesus was up. I've seen this thing, I said, God, I don't want to be a preacher because I was afraid. Much is given to you, much is expected. 
You that will, Jesus will not call you. You will just run and say, I'm a preacher. I had a voice. If you know the position you want to go and put yourself in, you, those ones that I heard, they are saying, God, I want to be a member. No bishop, no thing. I don't want to come and be a member. Listen and learn and go to Because the commission that you are a leader is on you. You are playing with it. You don't even know. And then, Jesus now said, he said, this hand like this. I saw a pastor. This pastor, I did not know who was he, who he was. But Jesus told me that this place is for leaders in my vain years. He began to name them. He said, you name them. I said, no, bishop, archbishop, pope, evangelist, prophet, prophetess, pastor wife. These are leaders in the church. Elders, deacon, deaconess, that they deceive my people. They are here, the hottest side. And then, when Jesus did his hand like this, one of them came up. And when I saw this wall, all over his body like this, the demon will be chaining them, chaining them, chaining them like this. They were destroying this person. And then he said to Jesus, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, I've been working for the devil, I know. I took power from Satan. You did not call me, I called myself. He began to explain all the things, things that he's supposed to do when he was on earth. He was ashamed to tell the people. He now began to confess it, everything to Satan, to Jesus. And then Jesus now said to me, do you know this person? How will I know everybody has born like that? I said, no. He said, this is prophet money. My coordinator is here from Sierra Leone. He will know who I'm talking about called prophet money. It's a great prophet in our country that just like T.B. Joshua. That will be doing great signs and wonders. Sunday service like this, you have up to how many service? Like three or four service a day. In every Sunday. Cars will be packed. They will be bringing people from the hospital. Sick people. Those that are infected with AIDS, all these things. He reached to a point, the power was too much on him. He was disappearing. If you invite him to a program, he will appear there. Everybody was, his name was all over. All over like this, Prophet Money. Prophet Money, the church name was Burning Bush. He was doing signs and wonders, prophesying things will come to pass. He was doing it. I think the devil deceived him one day and said that, you are going for fortification. You want to go and add more to his power. But he told his people that Jesus said he should go and spend more time until he will send him back. And by that, he's going to die. And then after three days, he will resurrect. He died. He died. They keep his body in the mortuary. They told the mortuary people that three days, Papa is coming back. They should not bury him. The news was all over in Freetown. We heard about it. Until how many almost one month back, like that, nothing was happening. So the father came there and said they should bring out his son body. They are going to bury. It's for my tribe. They carry him. It was a talking in the world, in the in the country. Ah, he did not resurrect. He said fake. He said this, but the church continue. Give it to one of his assistant pastor. Continue the same signs and wonders. People now say you have gone to heaven. He said Jesus said you will go. Maybe God did not decide to send him out. Many people in Sierra Leone believe that he's in heaven. I was shocked to see him in hell. And when he was there, you will pity him. He regretted the day he made covenant with Satan. He regretted the day he was born. He regretted the day he accepted to work for Satan to deceive people. He regretted the day that he was doing signs and wonders. Many pastors that are adding in their heart, you have not seen hellfire yet. You will regret the day they name you bishop, that pride have entered you, that you have started compromising. The day you be a leader, you have a congregation, you start compromising. This past, this prophet, when he's, Jesus now says, send a message, who are you? He now call his name, I'm prophet money. I open my heart, my heart, prophet money, a great science and wonder pastor. In hellfire, how I came to know that all the power he was his own mouth that from the genesis of his, his ministry is from Satan. 
Satan giving covenant. Say, if you, if you do this for me, watch him go and open the church. I will make you great. And truly, make him great. Give him name. And then he kill him and carry him to hell. All the church. And then the personal, the prophet begin to tell me that all his power was coming from Satan. The most painful thing that he said, that I pray that people that will hear this message, maybe you are a Sierra you have gone there, you will go and deliver yourself. He said, all those ones he have been laying hands on, he have been giving them the oil, was giving them his, his property to do signs and wonder. All those ones that they become healed, he wants to tell them that there is a mark that he have put on them for Satan. Any one of them that die without a deliverance from a right man of God, straight to hellfire. Because you have dedicated them to Satan. You are going from different prophet's place, different pastor lay hands on you. All you are looking for is signs and wonders. The signs and wonders will take place. You will be healed. Your eyes will come back. Your leg will say, but there is a mark. Satan has marked it. This is my own. It's just like when you are sharing money, you can't. This is my own. This is my own. When you are ready to die, if you don't repent, if you, God did not deliver you straight to hellfire, you will be asking yourself, what am I doing with Satan? Satan will say that you are carrying my property. So he now said that all those people he was laying hands on, all those people he have given them this water, given anointing oil, joined them together in marriage. He was doing deliverance on them. Even his altar, they should break it that he buried human beings there. That everything about that church, people should not go there because as they continue in that service, in that worship, they are doing it. It's so Satan. That that church was dedicated by Satan. Anybody that go there, praise their leader. This is how his punishment is increasing him because they are torturing him for deceiving children of God. He was crying. He now said, please, God, send me back. I will confess. I will confess. Now I know. I will do it, everything. Jesus now said, it's too late. And then I say, Jesus, have mercy on them because I saw these pastors these leaders, their department is more terrible, more fearful. See how many demons that was in their midst. It's like the demons is more than there. The demons was busy cutting this one head, pleating this one together, doing this. They were shouting. They were regretting. I don't want to be a pastor again. Father, have mercy on me. Jesus was looking at them. And then Jesus now said to me, let me tell you some of them that are here. My daughter, I am not a wicked girl. I want them they had in their heart. Jesus began to mention some things to me that some of them that are here, they are doing it, and some of you, you are still doing it. Jesus said to me, many of them, they had in their heart to my warning. I want them. All of these fake pastors, I used to speak to them. They will be, they will be suppressing it. I use message. I want them. Like what God did. He used his talina to warn some of your pastors that you you are angry with me up to today because I call your bishop name, because I call your pastor name. For you to fight for Jesus, you are fighting for pastor. You are hating me because of pastor, as if he's the pastor that created you. You so love your pastor more than Jesus. You are not even thanking that Jesus is visiting the world, telling people you are angry with Jesus because he mentioned your pastor name. Why did she have to call my bishop name? Is he the bishop that will judge you? God is not blaming you because the bishop, the water you are drinking in the church, the anointing you are taking, the tag in your hand, the communion that they are giving you, the lay hands, the bishop have brainwashed you people. You are inside cage. You don't even know anything. Some of you even love your pastor more than your husband. Anything your pastor say, what you do. Some of you love your pastor more than your wife. My bishop say, if you don't put on your head, you will leave this house. You, bishop, is controlling you to be wicked your wife. And you call yourself a, a man. God is not blaming the, it's you because you have taken all those concussions they have given you called signs and wonders. Jesus now said to me, they take my love and patience for granted. Some of the judgments that they are there. Some of them lie with my name for money and fame. You stand on the pulpit be lying, lying, so that people say you have, you have miracle, you have power, you do all these kind of things. Just for people to know, you go and buy power. You hear what Brother Appan was saying. That how can he believe in Jesus when some of the churches around their area will come to them to give them power? Anchor chief, they will put power there. They will be doing like this fire. Later, you stone you with anchor chief. You will fall down. Is the thing that Jesus is cheap like that? And then he say, some of them are doing practical sin in my house. 
Jesus was mentioned, some of them are seen like this. They were busy sleeping with the widows, busy sleeping with the, the, the women in the church, busy sleeping with the brothers in the church, busy sleeping with members. And they call themselves pastor, they call themselves pastor wife, they call themselves prophetess, they call themselves this. You, you busy going up and down with big Bible, you know that sister in the church, you have messed yourself with her. You know that brother in the church, you have messed yourself with that pastor. So, that is what Jesus is saying. He said many of them, they call themselves, they take my work for a business. You just decided that this is the way now we are getting money. A CLO pastor that came here, a CLO footballer. That the Rika is my witness and some of the coordinators, some of our sisters that are in Port Harcourt. He came to me and said that he came from Sierra Leone to Nigeria to do football. But the football, football business did not work. And one of his friends told him that, you know, you know how to talk. We can make money. He said, oh, he said let's be a pastor. He now said, I don't know Bible. I did not go to Bible school. He said, did you need to know Bible? Let's just go and take power. We'll begin to see vision. You see people. This is how he went to the sea and take power. He said, when he was there, be big pastors that have name in Nigeria that people are worshiping there. They will do great signs and wonders. Scatter Bible. He was shocked to see them there. Oh, he called some name for us. And then, by that, he now said that, ah, so it's true. It's like Jesus don't have any power because all these pastors that are ruling this nation, making name for Jesus traveling, so all of them are in cult. There, what is the answer? Maybe Jesus truly died in all resurrect. That was what he was thinking. But after he listened to my testimony, he now says, so this is what is waiting for us. Jesus just keeps silent. So there is a great pain waiting for us that are lying with his name. He now begins to call all the property they give them in the sea, touch and follow anointing, rob and this or whatever, sleeping with girls, any lady touch, any married woman, if you want to sleep with you, you will not have power over yourself, you will be sleeping with you doing signs and wonders for ministers, for this, for that. But he was a false prophet. He did not know Bible. All he knew is to prophesy. He would just quote one scripture, and all the rest throughout the program, five hours, six hours, is prophecy. And then he said, Jesus now said, many of them, they were doing, teaching false doctrine and practices. He said, many of these pastors that you see here today, this bishop, this the founder, overseer, they were teaching false doctrine, they were doing false practices. And some of them, because they have ordained, they have left that kind of doctrine, many people are following them in that their doctrine. Papa says that we should do. Papa died and left this doctrine for us. And many people that you see in the hellfire today and on their way, they are on earth, they are coming through their false teaching and doctrine. They are coming to hellfire. It's because of some of them that are here. You, the Lord did not call you. You just read the scripture. You now say you're not, you went and write a book. Make a CD, whatever thing. You will repent. That book is going to be deceiving people. As it's deceiving people, you are there. So you must check yourself today. What you have said to somebody, what you have preached out of your own mind that have destroyed many people. Pastor Chris, Christ Embassy told us that tattoo is not a sin. I went and put tattoo. Demon torture me in hellfire for tattoo. You can see how they are destroying many people. He said, what you put on your body doesn't matter. And he was one of my pastors alive. Pastor Chris Yerkilomi was one of those pastors. When I reach hell, demon now told me, who told you to mark your body? Didn't the Bible tell you not to mark your body? But because I believe him, is this and I wonder, he now said, whatever you do on your body, is not a sin. Smoking is not a sin. This is how people are doing up and down. And you are under some of those kind of pastors that will tell you this and that. And Jesus says some of them are in hellfire. And they have teach those people like that. Many are going to hell. Those ones that are in Christ's embassy now, worldliness, the youth, they don't hear anything. All they know is prosperity. They don't know that there is a great punishment waiting for them. And then Jesus said, many that are crying here today, that is hellfire, was sent by these false teachers that are here. It's like Jesus carried their own department away from the people. Their own torture was too much. I'm telling you sometimes when I sit down like this, I say God, thank you that you sent me to a right person because I will be afraid to even teach what I don't know because tomorrow my torture will be great for lying in any word I say. And members, anything you say, pastor say, sister say, brother say, they will grab it. You don't know it's a sin. And you pastor, you leader, what you are saying you don't know, it's better you bring yourself down and go and learn more about holiness and righteousness that will save you. And then Jesus now say, Jesus now said, let me take you to show you what Satan is giving them. 
And then Jesus now carried me to one department, the devil department. I saw Lucifer sitting down, very gentle like that, and very busy writing. Jesus now said to me, you people on earth are the ones that are playing. Satan is not playing. Satan is busy every day. He's thinking I will bring strategy to defile you people, defile you. All this catalog, this style, this, this fashion, nakedness, is Satan that is bringing them. And those modelists, those company, they are, they are bringing it on now, draw it and make it. All those naked dressing, women will wear short trousers, pants, all these things. They say it's fashion. 2016, men will wear skirts, women will wear trousers. Satan is the one bringing all those fashion because he knows what God hates. And he knows that if we do this, he's defiling us. Jesus said, all these things Satan is doing, is you people that put it, defiling yourself, is of the devil. And then Satan, Jesus now carried me and showed me where I saw a crowd of people, millions of people standing before a pulpit, a, 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 a stage like this. And then as they were standing there, and I asked Jesus, what are these people doing in the kingdom of darkness? Because I believe that human beings on earth, all of us, we are praying, all human beings say, I hate Satan, I hate Satan. But I'm not seeing all demons standing. I'm seeing complete human beings standing inside the kingdom of darkness. What are they doing here? Jesus now said, these are the agents of, for, agents of darkness for Satan. And this one that are standing here, I will tell you. But I will only tell you about the pastor's home because some of you have listened to the testimony is there. Jesus now say, this first group you are seeing, these are ministers of the gospel. All kind of rank. Both man and woman. I saw them, they are prophets, prophetess, pastor, evangelist, this, that, bishop, archbishop, reverend, apostle, all this one, evangelist, all this one, great uh, master or whatever, they are there. And then Jesus now say, they are here to pay email. They are here to take more power. They are here to donate. I saw them with, with gallons standing by their side. By their side. And now Jesus told me, and I asked the Lord, what is inside this gallon? Jesus now told me that this is the innocent blood they have come to donate. There is a big drum, like a pot, that where they, as these women are pouring the tea like this, he said, you see, they will come and pour the blood that they have killed. As you are bringing more blood, this is how they will give you more position. As you are killing more, this is how they are giving more position. So many pastors, they are busy killing their members like that. And then Jesus now showed me when Satan was giving them a dirty water with blood. As they drank this water, they will use it, after drinking some, they will use some to wash their face. After they finish this washing their face, they're not speaking some kind of language I did not hear. And then I asked Jesus, Father, Anything they are saying here, I want to hear so that we know what I will say. I'm not hearing what they are saying again. What are they saying? Jesus now said, this is the evil tongues that is reigning in the world today. These are the satanic tongues. Not by me. Many tongues that they are speaking in the church, many tongues that pastors are saying when they want to start doing deliverance, they will be speaking that all. It's a satanic tongue. As they are saying this, they are invoking evil spirits. And then I say, why are they washing their face? Jesus now say, it's to see signs and wonders. That's why they will be telling you which food you eat before coming, the panty you wear, everything to tell you evil because it's a evil eye. And then Jesus now says, see what they are giving them. Go and tell my children, I'm not the God of handkerchief. I'm not the God of water. I'm not the God of their oil. I'm not the God of their water. I'm not the God of their stone, incense, candle, apron, all this sand, salt, ban. They will be giving you ring, chain. Rosary, they will be giving you the church. So go and do signs and wonder. They will give you salt. They will give you this. You know what they are giving? Man, too. You are buying a fan. Come. All this is set. Jesus say, I am not the God of these things. I've said in my word, prayer is the key. There is no barrier between you and me that when you pray, I will answer you. That there is no substance that should take its place. That many of his children, that they cannot pray again. All they are doing, any little thing, they will run and take anointing oil. They will run and do this. They are inside their sin. They are not planning to come out of their sin. All they want is prosperity. They will live in sin. They will take anointing oil, rob for prosperity. Tell them I'm not that God in that anointing oil because I died to take them from their sin, not to leave them in their sin and prosper them. And then Jesus began to show me, Satan was giving them handkerchief, was giving them oil, was giving them water. All this water, they call living water, healing water, you are just drinking. You are just drinking. Some of you say, but I bought my own water for myself. The pastor just lay hand on it. The power that is coming out of their hand is entering there. Go to the Facebook and hear some of them are invoking 
lizard into you. You will not know why the lizard come, but they are the one invoking it. You vomit it as a science and wonder. They are the one confessing that they are the one invoking it in the spirit. You will not see. So even if you bring your own water, they lay, put their hand like this. It is entering there. Jesus now say, all those oil, they are giving you mixed with human being oil. You are just busy rubbing. You will see signs and wonders, but I'm telling you, you will surprise to see yourself that day you don't rapture, you die and end up in hell. Because this is satanic property. Ring. Jesus, said, Jesus was showing me when Satan was giving a ring. All those, they are big, big ring. You see them in their fingers. Go and collect it in the marine kingdom. All of them, they do their hand like this. The power is coming from the ring. Lay hands on you. And then I saw Satan was giving them chain, perfume, stone. Incense, candle, all kind of color of candle, sand, salt, apron, invisible gloves. When they put these gloves in their hand, you will not see it. Unless you have spiritual eyes, God open your eye. When they wear it in their occultic realm, when they come out for service or anything, when they put it on, they will be laying hands on you. The healing will take place, but that glove have marked you. That is what Prophet Manny was confessing. And then I saw Satan was giving them rosary, and band, sweet, comb. And then I saw something like blood giving, and then Jesus now saying, These are the polluted communion that they are sharing. There are some churches, the communion have to come from headquarters before you people take communion. They will pollute it, they are sending to you people. Jesus, and now say, Jesus, we should not take communion. Jesus now say, No, you should take communion, but pray on everything. My children are not praying again. All these polluted things they are taking in the churches, buying in the market, have killed their prayer life. I've killed their evangelism life. I've killed their study of the world. They have killed their love. The fear of God in their heart have died. You just take something you eat. You don't pray or anything. You cannot pray again. You must go back to your prayer life because Satan is polluting everything around you. And then Jesus now showed me when Satan was giving them coffin, a small box like this. As you see, Aquan was saying they will carry baby and do. I saw them. Anyone they want to kill, Jesus said, this is the coffin. They, if they put your name there, this, that, you will not die in the church. I say, all the kind of things. Jesus now said, majority of these pastors are killing their people. And then Jesus showed me when Satan was giving them cloth. The cloth, they will put it under themselves. It's like a sickness, red, all kind of color. Jesus now said, this one, when they are passing like this, is for their protection. Jesus now showed me when Satan was giving them polluted money. And I asked the Lord, this money is for what? The Lord now says to buy their soul. Many pastors of culture say, money is appearing in your purse. Money is appearing in your purse. Or they want to do good to you. All this demonic money that will appear in your purse. Jesus now say, these are the money of Satan. When they give you, you eat it. You do whatever thing with it. The time will come, you have sold your soul to the devil. So Jesus now told me and said, go and warn them. Go and warn them. And I told the Lord Jesus, Father, all these things I've seen, I will not go to denomination. I will not go. That time, I don't even know about Orimo. I was not even thinking of any denomination or non-denomination. I said, God, I will not go anywhere. I will just be going out and preach because I don't know who will gain. I will trust who's pastor again. The Lord Jesus now told me that not all denominations are polluted. But the ones that are polluted are plenty than the ones that are not polluted. They have overshadowed the righteous one. But my children should go back to their prayer life. Tell them to pray. And tell them to take away the property of Jezebel. All those makeup, eye pencil, lipstick. All those attachments, falseness, trousers, bleaching, perfume, dyeing your hair. You woman, you are babbing your hair like a man, cutting it very low. It is a sin. You are not covering your head coming to church. It is a sin. You man, you are dressing, putting your trousers down, open your chest. You are babbing all kind of wayward bab, tinting your hair. It is a sin. You are bleaching. It is a sin. Jesus name all these things. You are carrying wedding ring. You don't believe. Jesus said that ring is not of him. And then Jesus now told me that. My time is at arm. I, the Lord, have established my movement on earth to gather all my children, the doctrine that have been lost, that I want my pastor, my shepherd, to teach that they have put aside. This is what I'm generating again. I'm resurrecting the doctrine that will save every soul. Without holiness and righteousness, no man shall see me. Many of my shepherds that I give them this word, they have kept it aside now. But I've raised up this movement to go and wake them and gather them for me. So I was shocked. A movement, go to you to have your own. Because when you talk, I established, it's like it came on earth. 
an exception. So that was my thinking. He now told me that when you go, you are going to join Holiness Ivan Movement. It's my last act. That's why I used to tell people that, or more, I will not live here. Oh. Nobody invited me, even Pastor Dika. It was not a word. It was Jesus that introduced that me, told me from heaven. Even Pastor Bemba that was there, no Sierra came to me. Finda tried to make effort. But since he talked about Yarin, I did not want to know what is happening again or whatever. But when Jesus said, Go and join them, my daughter. If you are there, you listen to all what my servant is telling you. You listen and change and do it. You are there waiting for me for going to go to heaven. But if you go and listen and you go back to your former life. I will dump you without mercy. So when the Lord say, holiness of our movement is saying that, but I remember that there is no church in my country that have holiness. The only church that God, that God is talking about, the dressing, is deeper like, but he did not say deeper like, he said holiness of our movement. My mind was running, is there any holiness movement in my country? This church, how can I locate this church? Jesus now just say, go and join them. That the man that is his preaching is my son, is preaching my word for my heart. And then when the Lord said like that, the two angels, the angel, they carry me back. I saw myself lying there, enter. When I came back to my senses, enter my body, I came back. And now as the first thing that came out of my mouth, I was asking Finda, who is holiness of our movement? Finda was shouting, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor Bemba was there televising it. Because I was eager, they now say, come that there's nobody named holiness of our movement. It's a denomination. Because I was thinking it's a man. Because when Jesus said, the man is preaching my word, I thought, say, the name of the man is Holiness of our movement. Amen. So, Jesus told me to join. And by the grace of God, since I joined, all what Papa has been preaching, my church, if I should have been there, no wonder I will end up in hell. Jesus is not a wicked God. You see yourself in hell, check yourself well. There is nothing that he has done selfish to you. You deserve to be there. Hallelujah. So Jesus now told me that anywhere you go, my daughter, anywhere you declare this word, tell them, I am ready to forgive them because my time is short. I am sending last grace and mercy. Let them confess their sin. I am so happy to preach to ministers that are here because I know majority here, you are evangelists, you are an usher in your church, you are a minister, you are a pastor wife. You are the people that you are fighting God in the churches today. When God is sending message, you will stand. But if you have known this one that, ah, this is how God is moving now. Let's comply. Let's follow. We will see a greater, faster change. Holiness will take over this world. But because you pastors are standing, are deceiving, when God say like this, you use scripture and say like that. That's why I'm very happy to tell you. Because if you don't change, many of your members are in hell not crying. Many of them are in hell fire crying. Many, many, many. I just want to take that, de- use name of God to beg daddy just two minutes for you to see this hellfire that you are allowing your members to go you are allowing yourself to be deceived by the devil tell you it's a lie I can come on here in. I can lie in. sin in. unforgiveness carry it away just ask God for mercy it will take you to hell Jesus told me there must be difference between a child of the world the child of the devil and the child of God in their talking in their appearance in their behavior in their dressing Go and tell it there must be different. The attire they are wearing to go to the nightclub, that is what they are bringing it today in the church. And my servant, my shepherd, are not talk, saying anything. Women will dress naked the same way they go for a wedding with short skirt, open back. This is how they will come back to the church. All those youths wear split skirt. Their bot- botox is how their leg is out. They wear the same skirt for nightclub. They wear it again for here. Jesus said there must be different. When you see a child of God, you will know that this is a child of God. Please, daddy, let them do two minutes. But I ask the mother, put for me life cry and be thinking about yourself. How many people are in this place calling your name now? How many members you have, you, you have buried in your church with hearing in the coffin? How many of your family members you have buried with this message that they do not know? Even you, it's now you are knowing it. Begin to imagine them in hellfire. They are calling your name. They are calling your name, reverend. Evangelist, sister, brother, your family member that just died. You refuse to tell them the truth. You don't even know when you call yourself pastor. Evangelist, you are seeing vision, you're a prophet. See how they are crying with you today. 
in hellfire. You will know what you are going to do now. When you go, you will know what you will do now. You yourself will know what you will do. This man is a clip. This man was a drunkard, fighting with women, loving women. See how they have judged him today. This is how you will cry. There is no laughter in hell. There is no water in hell. There is no air. There is no fresh air. You see how the devil is pushing them in the fire. They are using axe to cut people into pieces. You think there is play in hell. You are playing with, with salvation. Come on, lie. You say it's just this small lie. And God has forgiven me. I cannot go and confess this sin to my husband. You are fearing your husband more than your wife, more than God. You can see what they are doing. Sending them back into the fire. They want to come out. That fire you are seeing. You see the human being, you cannot recognize them. They want to come out. The demon is pushing them back inside the fire. You can see how their body is roasting. Can you stand it? You cannot stand it. Jesus is warning you. You don't know the time you will die. Some of you are planning to see December, but you don't know what will happen to you before December. He is the author and finisher of your faith. Your life is in his hand. If he said, come home now, nobody will ask him questions. You better repent now. You go and change your preaching. Holiness and righteousness. You are afraid of your congregation. See what is happening. You will die before your congregation. You pastor, you worker, all your congregation, you are afraid to gather. They will be the one dancing behind you and dump you. Better save your soul now. It better you save your soul. You see how the fire is displaying. This is fornicators. See how they are torturing a private part. You are a young woman here. You are not married. You are busy stealing. You are sleeping with a man. You see how they are torturing their private part. Adult trash. You are hiding. You husband. You are sleeping with girlfriend. See how they are torturing this woman's head. Attachments. You will cry. You will cry. You will be you will be saying, is this common attachment that I'm suffering for soul? You see what is happening here. I am telling you, my sister, my brother, you will not stand it. That day you will not stand it. See how human beings are trooping to hell. As Jesus is saying, depart. This is how they are trooping. The place is so hot that before you enter the fire, your body has cut because you cannot stand it. You see what is happening there. All this sound you are hearing is a life cry, original life cry. This is sound of hellfire. You can see what is happening. You can see what is happening. When you go to the hospital, they are doing abortion. They will give you medicine that you will not feel injection. This one is raw, it's fresh. They will insert the iron in your vagina, will come out of your mouth, and your feeling your feeling will be fresh. It's just like you sit down and somebody use knife to cut you, and you will shout. That is how you carry that same feeling to hell. So you better repent now. See what is happening. You can see what is happening now. This is a snake entering the vagina of the woman and tearing the woman into two. You cannot stand it. See how people, see how demons are torturing people, breaking their part. This is homosexual. You see the hot iron. They are putting it in their anus. You cannot stand it. I am telling you, add in your heart, but that day will come. You will regret why God created you. You will regret why you have in your heart to the truth. You will regret why you become a pastor, a reverend. That you did not preach the truth. If you don't preach the truth, if you don't tell the people the truth, you will regret why you decided to become a pastor, a leader. See how they are doing this person. You see what is happening. Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to go to heaven? Make a way now, a holy and righteous way. But if you don't want to go to heaven, this is your place. There is only two eternity, heaven and hell. If you miss heaven, no remedy, don't know that you are going to hell. That day Jesus will say, depart from me. As he said, depart, the wind that will just carry you, will just land you inside this fire. You will cry. You will regret. You will regret. What have you been doing? Stealing money in the church. You are lying. You are a prostitute. Thank you, brother Asamata. That is it. If you don't ask God for mercy, if you add in your heart, if you had in your heart, if you go, I'm telling you, you are not fighting Sister Linda. The one that sent me is Jesus. You are telling your member, don't listen to Sister Linda. She's a prostitute. She's a liar. Okay, sir. She's a liar. She's a witch. It's from the devil. Those pastors that are saying that they are the one inside occultic realm. You hear what Akbar 
grandmaster was telling him, don't listen to these people, they are evil. He was the one evil, but because he cannot fight them, that's why he's calling them evil. Your pastor is telling you, Sister Lina is from the sea. He's from the marine kingdom. Thank God that a marine kingdom is telling you don't go to hell. Thank God an agent of darkness is telling you don't go to hell. Hell is full. We, they want to close hell. But I know I came from God. And the word I say is truth. It's something that will save you. Let be on our feet. Check your life. Do you have malice in your heart? Unforgiveness? Backbiting? Last year, you steal money in the church? Pastor, you are using money the way that is only you. You are eating and embezzle the money. You are not doing the money the right way. Pastor wife, you are disrespecting your husband. Fighting your husband in the night. You are, you are closing your leg from your husband. You are doing evil. You are fighting your husband. You husband, you are still fighting with your wife secretly. What have you been teaching your people in the church? Are you the one that, one of those pastors that were backing those other pastors? That Sister Linda is a liar. If you have done that in your church, go and restitute. Call them back and say, my church, I was fighting wrongly. It's true. Because Jesus will tell you, you fight me, not Sister Linda. Because I'm the one that sent her. That message was not from her. You block me, not to deliver my people. If you have been like that, going up and down doing evangelism, you are not preaching the true message. You are still hiding your heart. You are carrying rubber thread on your head. You are, baby, you women, you cut your hair. He said, God says we cut our hair. But the same God said, a long hair to a woman is a glory. And you are busy deceiving yourself. If you have low cut on your head, you are not plating your hair purposefully. You are saying you are not plating your hair. You are sinning. Your blouse, the cloth is bad. Now, holiness women, they are sleeve is short sleeve now. Their muscle all is out. You are wearing split skirt. You are, your, your cloth, when you bend that, they will see your breast. When they correct you, you say, our own is too much. It's we that have extra oil that will make it to heaven. We will go do extra. Confess your sin. Jesus is here. Ministers and leaders, your department in hell is terrible. In Jesus' name we pray. If you know the Lord is speaking to you, you have done error in your preaching, in your doctrine, in your thinking, lusting, fornication, adultery, lying, smoking. You have this, this is your business. You are selling alcohol, selling, you have brukutu business, nightclub. You are doing all this party, supporting, giving money to people to do sin, contribution to evil. You have done all this satanic thing. You are not sleeping with your husband. You husband, you are left your, leaving your wife. You are going up and down. You have done evil. Raise up your hand. If you need second touch of Christ, if you know you die now, you will not make it to heaven. If you know, no hide. There is a spirit that called shame. Many people they are ashamed to accept Christ. And when you live here, you don't know that was your last grace. Please put a big shame to the devil. Come in front. Tell the devil that you have decided. Is it anger? Is it malice? Is it backbiting? This is a spirit that you cannot fight. Only God that will deliver you. Is it witchcraft? Jesus will take it away. Because that anger you are seeing, any little thing you are angry, I'm telling you, now hell fire. Lying, fornication, masturbation. You are angry in your heart, lost in. Sometimes you blaspheme. God, why my own life is like this? You are blessing other people. You are talking to God like that? Come and say, God, have mercy on me. As you are coming, just be praying. You are going up and down teaching people false doctrine. You are the one telling them, don't believe it's a lie. Put on your earring. As if you are the one that created them. If you know the damage you have done to make somebody to go back to sin, you pastor, you will regret. That one person that you talk to, go and put back your earring. You sister, you are telling your neighbor, it's a lie. Put back your earring. That mouth, you will regret why God give you that mouth. You are going back to tell that sister that, sorry, I lie. I deceive you. Please go back. Go back and believe in Jesus. Remove your earring. You, you remove your earring. Your pastor deceive you. Put it again. It's like a dog going back to his vomit. If you know what that Yari is doing to you, if you know the spirit that is following that Wivon, if you know the spirit that is following that trousers, if you know the spirit that is following that Yari, if you know the spirit that is following that bleaching skin that you are going up and down, that makeup, that eyelash. Oh, my sister, if you know, if you know the punishment for those things, you are seeing it as a common thing, but you don't know what is attached to it. Every attachment has spirits. Demonic spirit. Confess your sin. 
all your words that you have been saying against this movement, against Pastor Dika, against Sister Linda. You are insulting them. You are saying evil against them in the internet. You are doing to God, not to us. Because if it's not God that sent me, you should not have known me. So if you hate me, you hate God. Repent for that sin. The rest of you remain where you are because there's no space in the front. Remain where you are. Remain standing where you are. There's no space in the front. Jesus name we pray Remember me oh Lord remember me in your kingdom Remember me my Lord my God Remember me in your kingdom. I don't want to go to hell. Remember me, oh my father. I don't want to perish, Lord. 
Remember me in your mercy. Father, remember me, oh my Jesus. Remember me, oh my Lord. I don't want to go to hell. Remember me, oh my Father. I want to go to heaven. Remember me, oh my Jesus. Deliver me from Satan. Remember me, oh my Father. Deliver me from all sins. Remember me, oh my Father. Lay hand upon your chest. The Lord will remember you. He brought you here not for not not to play with you, but to serve you. I repeat this prayer after me. Lord my God, you brought me here to serve me. I have come to you. I knew my sins. Serve me. Serve me, Lord. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to miss heaven. Lord my God, serve me. I surrender my life to you. I repent today. I will not go back to those dirty things. I will not practice those things again. I will not hide Satan in my life. I will confess it out. Father, bring me out. Bring me out from that group. Bring me out from that power. Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me. Jesus. Jesus name we pray The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816 902 3948 or 0805-683-4323.
you can also reach us through our email address holiness revival movement at gmail.com god bless you for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for god sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior.